Yo, what's up guys, Nandra here, and welcome to another video. So this video is going to be different in that specifically what I want to talk about is the importance of, of a sort of net neutrality when you play. You need, you need to not let your emotions get the best of you, both, both positively and negatively. You, you want to just think about it, you want to just think objectively about the game itself. And not much more, not much more than that. Like you don't want to, you don't want to be thinking about, oh well, I got high rolls, or oh well, I'm gonna lose, or something like that, or oh, I'm winning, so I can do whatever the fuck I want. No, you, you need to be, you need to be thinking rational each and every turn because whether you're winning or losing, un until un until someone HP bar hits zero, there's always something that you can do. And for this game in particular, I I get a massive I get a massive lead over my opponent, and uh, by by start by start I start getting full of myself and start making some and start making some misplays, and also I don't I also don't think don't think fully about his outs. My and this is one of those games where I 100% des des deserve to lose because I could have played around his outs, but I didn't. And and I just don't get punished for it because you know sometimes there's sometimes there's just like straight up just no no justice in the world. Anyway, so I'm I'm still using the the Dread Sea Queen Poly deck or or sorry, I, I believe I ended up call I believe I ended up name, trying to name the deck Polyphonic Sea because because that because that's what I like or because that because that because like their names kind of don't flow that well so so it makes it kind of hard to, to to name the deck but. Anyway, so I get a pretty I get, I get a pretty good like god hand here. I'm also going first too. So going first going first as dragon is is generally really, really good for versus versus aggressive decks because it means that you can fervor on it, it means they can fervor for free or not fervor for free. You can oracle for free. So so here I get the oracle, and again the reason the reason why it's the reason why it's a free oracle is because. They'll just be developing their first two two. Whereas, whereas if you're going second and you played Oracle, they can keep developing. And in this and in this meta, usually what that'll mean is they'll develop a Goblin Leader, and you'll be in a rough spot because you don't because you don't have anything, anything to contest their board. But yeah, so I go ahead and Oracle. I could I could have tried tried to dig for Fervor. However, I don't. I just kind of keep it. I I get lucky anyway because I get a Fervor. And this is basically, as I said before, shaping up to be a god hand. Because next turn I'm going to Fervor, turn after I'm going to Sybil, and if I see a second Oracle, well, he's out of the game. There's something, this is going to be very, very difficult for him to get back into it. So here, I just Fervor. I go ahead and trade into Goblin Leader. Just because I need that to stop making tokens. I do get an Oracle here. I also see, I also have a Polyphonic Roar. Now here, this turn, my opponent misplays severely. You 100% should not play should not play out double lurching corpse. Lurching corpse is pretty much an MVP in this matchup, just because lurching corpse plus activator tr trumps trumps any big thing that 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 dragon wants to play versus you. Oh, dragon wants to play Bahamut. Oh, well, we just we, we just preemptively play, play your lurching corpse then in or, in order to discourage them from playing the Bahamut because. Because the Bahamut will, will will essentially be a be a plus five, but it will also get taken out at the same time. So, but anyway, if I had had something like say Breath of Salamander here, I I would have gotten rid of two two huge annoyances for free. And and sure, if you want if you wanted to, to go Cerberus there, that would have been perfectly fine. I would I would have hundred percent been okay with, with making that trade. However, I'm going to go to ten. Ten mana ten mana is, is where I want to be at with this deck. Because suddenly I can play Polyphonic Roar next turn, and he's gonna have he's gonna have a, a, a very very difficult time punishing me. I said this before in a previous video, but I think that that when you play versus Shadow now in its current in, in its current iteration, you you want to be playing Polyphonic Roar just because they can one v one your your entire deck, but they cannot one v one, and an endless stream of. Of, of Windblast Dragons just because the wind, the Windblast Dragons all have storms, so I get to, so I get to dictate trades when when they first come out. And as long as, long as they just heal up and, and use AOE, eventually I can go ahead and whittle down your board. And while 
Shadow does Shadow does have a lot uh, does have a vast amount of resources in the late game. It still pales in comparison to just you know infinite five fives. So anyway, I go I go ahead. He goes ahead and he and he uses Necro Assassin. Now him using Necro Assassin like this, this is really good for me because he's now used two activators to get rid of one card. So that's a good trade for me. I will fucking take it. And here he he Eva's Lurching Corpse. I don't really agree with the Eva that much. The reason why I don't agree with the Eva is because your, your Eva in this matchup is, is the most important thing. Yes, he can push damage by doing this. Yes, if he if I have Grimner, it basically ends, it basically ends up the same way. He got two extra damage. However, I don't like it just because you're versus late game dragon now, and you've already used up a lot of your activators. And I have a poly, and I, and I now have a poly in play. It's going to be very, very difficult for him, for him to catch up now. The other important thing about about, the, about playing the poly as early as I did was he's not at seven mana. At seven mana, you you, you need to be, you need to be a, a, lo, a little bit more concerned about the plays that you make because if they're not impacting the board, well, this head can't be taken. It, they're, so they, uh, they're going to play Ektar. You're going to have a bad time, and, and suddenly you, you're, you're going to be in a very, very you're going to be in a very, very precarious situation. So I played. So I played it when I did because if I, if I'm going to play it at all this game, this is the only time I can play it. And here he Evo's Necro Assassin, and I take eight damage. An important thing about this is that. He can't, he, if I clear his board this turn, he can't kill me, and he will probably never be able to kill me. The reason why is because this, the mid shadow list that he's using, they don't, they don't run, they don't run Phantom Hell anymore because you kind of don't need it, and, and you need, you need, to, you need to, to conserve shadows for Ektar. And, and because I know that, I, I, I can play, I can be a, 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 a little bit more cavalier with my, with my health total. But but what I do this turn is completely inexcusable. I go ahead and I kind of brain fart, and I, th I think for some, for some bizarre reason that that, that Necro Assassin has four HP, and I go ahead and I and instead of trading into Necro Assassin and then playing Grimnir and losing my ward because because that's the order that's the correct order that you need to do it in just be, just that way you don't take a 50-50 to lose the game. I instead go Grimnir. Or sorry, I instead go face first, then go Grimnir. So, 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 I, so I now can't even correct my mistake, and and I set myself up to t to take five damage next turn. If he if he has Cerberus, I well, congrats! I've just handed him a, I've just handed him a free reason, uh, a free win for absolutely no reason at all, just just because I got overconfident. If if he does have the Phantom Hell again, free win. However, it's worth noting that that Ektar won't kill me. I'm at, I'm. I'm I'm just one out of range of Ektar, and that's good for me. Just that way, I won't I won't get punched too hard. And, and because I also know that he has Ektar, because like he he basically positioned for it. So he plays the Ektar. He double trades, goes face for seven, but I'm not dead yet, so I, so I can still salvage this situation. However, again, I don't think about his outs correctly. So here I go forever. I see what I draw, and now you might be thinking that oh, well you just go Sybil here, right? No, the reason why you don't go Sybil is because right now the only out in his deck is for him to have exactly is for him to have exactly exactly Cerberus, or he can have Phantom Hell, but in, the, but in this case mo most realistically Cerberus, and he hasn't drawn any cards. No. However, it could very easily be his next his next top deck, and and as I said before, until the life totals hit zero, until life totals hit zero, you can you can very easily still win or lose a game ba ba based off each and every decision that you take. The correct play this turn would have been to stay at four HP, but go, but go ahead and. And ping and ping his ping his Ektar, then go Lyrial, Lyrial Evo, ping the Necro Assassin, and then trade and then trade into his, and then trade into his zombie. 
while yes this does this does give him a very very easy target to zombie party it does however remove all of his bodies on board and and with this shadow deck one of the weaknesses of the shadow deck is that you don't have any out of hand damage so it's very very important that, that, a, a, that you make your board as sticky as possible and if you can't do that then i'm just gonna win just because i will never ever 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 let you touch my life total again if i if i can help it but like i said i misplay here and i don't go for the full clear because because i i just was not thinking about it just because like i, I kind of went like autopilot i, I just kind of went like autopilot mode and, and went to fill up my curve just because i've been playing a lot of curve decks recently so yeah this kind of also segues into something else i want to talk about when you play the game each time you make a play and that actually changes things for a little bit you want you want to take a, a solid 30 seconds if you can especially if you if you have if you can can go ahead and and and, and take and take all and take all the other actions that you know you're gonna do and just kind of just kind of pause for a bit evaluate the game state and understand okay well what what is my best line here i i'm kind of tired but that's no excuse for, 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 for me not to take or for me for me not to take the best lines here just because i i was given a, a proverbial a proverbial god hand on a silver platter without needing to mulligan there is if i lose this game that that's very very bad for me because i was given all of the tools necessary to win but he goes thane and thane is not a punish he can ping me for two but that doesn't matter i don't care about that because now i'm going to play israfil i'm going to heal up to nine and as i said before if he didn't kill me in the last two turns he never ever gets to kill me again so i go face for five and now he is in range of, of second grimnir And here he makes another massive board. W one of the weaknesses of Polly is that, well, it's not a weakness so so much so much as it is a benefit, I guess, is that a lot of times people people will, will just like assume that they they weren't that you're not playing that you aren't playing that you aren't slash slash just won't slash just won't be be willing to Bahamut. I can Bahamut you at any point in time. Make no mistake, but that, that is a very real card that I can play at my discretion. A am, am I reluctant to play it? Yes. W will, it, will I just never play it at all? No. Okay. So this turn, this turn is good for me now because <sighs> for three reasons. One, he doesn't have a ward. Two. Because because uh, because I'm so far ahead, I can go ahead and develop this and develop this Israel for free, and go ahead and ping and ping off his, and ping off and ping off and ping off his zombie. You might be wondering, well, what's the difference between pinging zombie and and pinging soul squasher? If I ping a zombie, he can, it uh, it means that if he, that if he can somehow work up and work up enough shadows to get to get back to six. That that if, that if he plays death death breath, will have one less two three ward. The other part is that I can also go ahead and fervor here too if I like. However, I have the Ishrafil and I need I need I need to heal up just that way, just that way. I'm forever out of range of of any of any potential bullshit. Oh, an additional an additional point that I would like to point out is that my opponent's last turn was very 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 good. Not not so much be, not so much because of all the axes he did and the board that he was able to make, but be, but because he was cognizant about 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 what about what would kill him. You might be wondering, okay, why didn't he just evo his four five o, o, over your windlash? I can that way he he would keep a bigger board. 
no the board the board that he gives will, will be very very weak because because if he if he kills the windblast dragon with with his white king his his white king will be a four uh, sorry will be a six two and at, at two hp it means that if i have oro in my hand i can just go ahead and ping off the white king and go face for five and that'll, and that'll be the end of the game I could also have used a blazing breath, and again, still end of the game. So, so by so by him sacrificing a zombie there, he he actually he actually yeah, he actually did that very very well. However, again, I would I would have said to have sacked the the, the little soul squasher just because a being ha having the typing of zombie is a lot better than just be you know being being a cute girl, which I know seems like blasphemy, but. But again, for the interaction of a specifically death breath, you you want to have as many zombies on your board as possible. But here I, I play Israfil, and just to be safe, I go ahead and ping off his zombie. If he has Ektar here, that's great. It can't kill me, and he needs to play a ward. So he plays Demon Eater to try to dig for one, but he doesn't draw it, so he scoops. Again, this was 100% a game that my opponent should have won just because I gave him every out in the world. I gave him all the time in the world in order to, in order to punish me for, 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 for having gotten overconfident with my hand. However, sometimes justice does not exist, and this is something that they 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 need to they need to kind of like make peace with in card games. There, there's always going to be there's always going to be going to be games where you just kind of nut draw and then you misplay and then you don't get punished. And, and, and conversely, there are going to be games where your opponent does that, to, does that to you and you can't punish them. It's just one of those... That's that's the only, that's only I guess, like, modicum of, of fairness in the game is that, like... It, 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 uh, is that you can have these games and your opponent can have these games. And, it, and it's just kind of a 50-50 sort of thing. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I know that this was, was kind of a longer video. I... <laughs> I wanted to make it a little bit shorter, but there were a few, but there were a few different things I wanted, to, I wanted to go ahead and touch on, just because I felt I felt like this was a very, very good was a very, very good game of of both what not to do for my opponent's side, as well as how to almost throw a game twice. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed. Go ahead and let me know what you think of Midrange Shadow down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. Go go uh, go ahead, go ahead and, and subscribe. Every every subscribe does count, or does does mean something, because I, I do have something planned for, for when I get for when I get more subscribe uh, more subscribers. Uh, but I'll go ahead and talk about that in a later video. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.